you get footage of me running <laughs> oh you took my joke i was gonna man. say that's that's a younger mike delicio that's right that is that does look like mike more than anyone else i do like to race uh vehicles yes <laughs> good afternoon everybody i'm tom vassal i'm z garcia how you doing i'm mike delicio hey it's been a while since we've done this if we ever have actually mm -hmm. i don't think we've ever done this sid the three of us around a table no. yak no. i may have done it on the Yagity podcast I, I definitely this topic on the podcast. you mean oh yeah for sure yeah Top 10 racing games. Hey, so uh -huh. when we talk about racing games, mm. I want to be clear, we're talking about games in which there is, racing is the theme at least. There's, there's, there's really? a lot of games where it's like the first person to 100 points. Yes, but but I will say like that... Like games in which fall into a race to a goal in victory points category is not what, is it's not what not you're okay. about. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of games. Right. Where you're like, it's six rounds, then count, right. or... The goal is yeah. 25 points. I mean, at that, in that case, you could say that, that Dune Imperium, because you're yeah. turning the first to 10 points. Yeah, trick-taking yeah. game, right, first right. to 100 points. No Those one, are all racing No one's games. like, what's your favorite game? Hearts. Like, mm. come on. I yeah. do have a racing game, which is a trick-taking game. Oh. Do you? I do not. Because <laughs> I would be very interested in playing that yeah, game, actually. There was such a thing. I, uh, a I deck. Any, that's there not any, a bad are there, idea. Are there any deck-building trick-taking games? Deck building trick taking games. What? A, a trick taking game follow suit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. lead a suit follow. And then maybe who wins the but, trick goes into your but deck. But also deck building. Is that such a thing? Or how has that not been done? I'm making it right now. By the end I'm of the video, I'll have I'm it. It'll be on Kickstarter in building, approximately two hours. A deck building racing game. There's a bag building racing game. Mm. Is there a deck building one? Am I forgetting one? Mm. Do you have one on your list? A, a, a bag building one or a deck building a one? A deck building one. Um, nope, I don't nope, think there's nope, a deck building nope, racing game. Nope, nope, I actually had an idea nope, for a nope. deck building racing oh. game. I think there is one now, though. Isn't there one? I do have, I have a deck building racing game on my list. This is a deck building-esque game. Yes, I have one too. I've got I've got a a deck building racing game on this list. This counts. I think we're having the same one. Maybe you're right. It ain't on my list. All I, right, well, let's yeah. find out what's on the list. Here we go. What is happening here? <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot, I cannot deal with this man. I want to find out if uh, everybody here at the table is qualified to be talking about this this list. I guess I should have done this before we started. But uh, do, do you uh, both know how to drive uh, standard transmission Stick? vehicles? Yeah. You do? I'm really going to be super rusty at it, but yeah. All right, you're, I you're okay. don't have a clue. I mean, I know... I know essentially how it works, but no. How does it work, Tom? Explain it to us. All right, Go ahead. Z and I are going to be doing the, the list today. Wait, what do you have to know how to drive? You must know how to drive standard transmission to be having a valid Well, it's going to be terrible when we do our educational game one. That's a good point. Because you I don't take know how to back. teach. Oh, yes! I had you where it hurts. You did. All right, my number 10 You're gonna is... You're going to need that to hit uh, <laughs> My number 10 is a game that I think is going to... Uh, have something that in common with many of the games on all of our list, and that this is incorporating a betting aspect too. 
A lot yeah, of racing I mean, games have a betting as I aspect. Thought. This is a, actually a very new game, but it is a dice game version of a game that has been around for a little while that I actually haven't played that. Any guesses? Long shot Long the dice shot game. the dice game. And stick shift because of the horses. That's right. The, the horses. Because they're automatic transmission, all these horses. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? Why did I... He was clearly being punny. Yeah, this I had think enough. he was just trying to... I was just trying throw to... Throw you off the scent of the horse. No, I was, was trying, trying to gatekeep. To, I was trying to gatekeep. I was just saying, he was trying to, to make, look down on me because I don't know how correct. to drive a stick shift. That's correct. So Long Shot the Dice Game is, as I said a moment ago, it's based off of an earlier game that I haven't played. You played Long Shot? Oh, yeah. I really yeah. like Long Shot. I've, um, I've had Long Shot since it came out. I mean, 09? Yeah, so I yeah. can't compare to one or the other. I just know that I really enjoyed this little package. It's, this looks it's, better than Longshot. It's uh, yeah, it's neat. I mean, you you're you know betting on horses, and you're actually you can buy horses as well, yeah. and you yeah. can get some special powers. There's a little bit of a roll and ride aspect to it, but mm -hmm. uh, but but a, a riff on it, not a just a standard roll and ride. It's more it of is, a racing yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, it does stand out. Uh, but yeah, it's a really slick little package. Uh, it makes me want to play the original game now. This is better. Is it? Oh, I think Longshot okay. the Dice Game is better than Longshot. Okay. It also has no more dice than Longshot, which I think is ri ridiculously funny. <laughs> it is it funny. has the same number of dice yeah. than Longshot does. Huh. Okay. They added no dice, but they call this the Dice Game. That is an interesting touch. This yeah. is a really popular... This game just came out, didn't it? It just came yeah. out. And it's already really popular. It's I mean, good. I know Shep Sedan did a review on it. You it's, did a review I on it. I really mm -hmm. liked it, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little package. If it counted as a racing game for me, I might have even put it on this list. It is a racing game! This is a betting game, sir. That. What are you betting on, Z? Horses. To do what? To win. What? <laughs> They race. I'm there not you go. It's a, a racing game. Which I am not involved. See, if, if this game cast us <laughs> as horses, I'd be like, bam, racing game. Wait, we I'm said sorry. specifically you, you, when we put it list together. I said betting games count. Yeah, you you do, you have zero legs to stand. This is why you had a hard time making your list. Right. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm like, what are you uh, kidding me? There's like thousands of these games. Fine. You say. So. Stick shift. What's your number 10? I would not put a horse <laughs> racing game on the list is all I'm saying. All right, my number 10 is Winner's Circle. There we go, horse racing game. Which is game. a horse <laughs> racing game. You are not the racers in this one either. You are the jockey, though. For like a brief moment, then you Yeah, flip, then you then leap you... from that horse <laughs> yeah, onto is... another horse. Now your consciousness is jumping and you from ride horse that to horse. horse. Wow. <laughs> and then you leap from that horse. It's kind of like Fast and Furious. <laughs> you seen Fast and Furious, the, the board the, game? The, the horse board... game? The horse, the horse <laughs> dice game. <laughs> Fast and Where furious. Where he slides the stallion More, underneath yeah. another one. Uh -huh, I love that. Yeah. That's a good move. Uh, you jump from, instead of roof to roof, you jump from hoof to hoof. Michael Bay presents Winter Circle. <laughs> <laughs> Winter Circle is a Reiner Knizia classic at it this is. point in which you are going to be putting bets on horses, rolling dice, and then based on what you roll on those dice, which are all symbols, by mm -hmm. the way, yep. then you move a horse. And each one of them has a number associated with the symbols. So you could purposely really run a horse up or really pick a symbol on one where that horse is terrible at that. Yeah. They move like twice. But then that horse is gone. So you're slowing it down by being the one who triggered it with a with a bad symbol for, for that horse. That's largely it. I mean, that's, that's the game big... is very much boiled down to, uh, to essentials. But it's enjoyable. It yeah. manages to both be very mechanical, but keep the liveliness of come on sparky sort of action going <laughs> yeah. so I, I like this one now to be fair it's been ages since i played winter circle yeah. or royal, royal turf, turf yeah same thing uh, but i i do enjoy it i think it's it's Knizia does betting and racing in his usual sort of somewhat dry very mechanical style but solidly put together yeah, so yeah. winter circle number 10 great game good stuff Tom, I believe it's you next. What were yeah, you thinking sorry, I was about? thinking. No, I like this you game were thinking, a lot. Is, this is that a horsey? <laughs> no, no, no. This is one of those games that if I don't know what else to pull out, this is a good one. Yeah. Like if a group of people that are kind of like, eh, they've never played before, it's really easy. It is. It is. Very Although, very be cautious about getting the Royal Turf Edition from face to face games. They have four races instead of three in that one, I think, right? I think, but also the horses are basically. Dark brown, slightly dark yeah. brown, a little bit less brown than that. It's a little confusing. Really? They also start them all in the same spot, as opposed to 
the winner circle where they have them staggered. The winner circle did clean the game up yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's still, yeah. it's still, I still yeah, liked yeah, it, yeah. but I like it better now. Mm. My number 10 is going to be not a crossover. Ooh. There's no way you two put this on your list. Okay. Go ahead. This is Monza, or Monza, oh, M-O-N-Z-A. Why would I not this put is, this on my this list? This is actually a really good choice, Tom. I, I didn't put it on my list, but this is a good choice. This is a great racing game for kids. Yes. And when I say kids, you can play this with really young kids. Yeah. Essentially, you roll a bunch of dice that have different colors on them. Mm -hmm. And then you move your car based on those colors, but you can pick the order. So if, if that red card rolled a blue, gray, green, blue, you know, you would move then the blue, then to the gray, then up to the green, then up to the blue. Are those the standard cars? Yeah. There's there's a new edition of I it say, now. I think I played an edition that didn't uh -huh. have the little heads. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the they made like a Monza. 20th anniversary <laughs> edition or something. Got it. Okay. But this game, I played this with my 22-year-old mm -hmm. when she was a kid, and I oh, now played okay, it with good, Jimmy. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> we had a good old rocky, <laughs> raucous <laughs> game the other day. No, I played this with her when she was like four. Yeah. And I played. I like this game because I taught it to my son, and then he instantly went and taught it to other people and really? played the game. Yeah, because yeah. it's that easy. You're just yeah. rolling dice. Yes, there's luck, but it's the choices are. How do you move following right. those colors? And also, you can set yourself up like the only two spots you can go to are blue. Yeah. Not a good spot to end in because right. if you don't roll blue in your next turn, you don't move. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Really like this Monza's one. Monza's a good game. Great game for kids. Monza. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Hey, my number nine, <laughs> Huff and Puff. Okay. My number nine is a game that I feel like is becoming a, um, I would say a modern classic. Oh, uh, I'm not going to use that. those words. I know. Well, that's the joke, because I did this, I did, but this is Camel Up. This is another betting which game. One? What do you mean, which one? The first edition or second? It's the second edition. Who obviously. cares? Well, well the one you can off, get right now. Off season? Not off season, not the card. On game. season. The actual <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah. Camel up. When the camel, se camel up season's off, go, yeah. go do something else. So, this is the most recent version here with the pop up tree and the plastic uh, pyramid as opposed to the cardboard one. But this is a very, very silly, almost party game, mm -hmm. uh, racing game where you're, and betting, uh, primarily betting. And, and it has the kind of a couple of little hooks to it, one being that the camel stack on top of each other. And that can add to some fun stuff that kind of throws off the. The uh, what you think might happen. There's slight probabilities by using the dice and things along those lines. But it's really a very silly game. Um, again, it's a game that with the right group gets that shouting. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, that's my favorite part of many racing games. Is kind of the the players, you know, rooting, well, rooting, rooting, rooting. As things know. get closer to being over, a good racing game needs to achieve that. Rising tension as things right. inch towards the finish line. Exactly. Otherwise, you're missing something. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think that that Sorry. Camel Up it do, it does it very well. It's also a game that I oftentimes will recommend uh, for people that are not really heavy into uh, modern uh, hobby games, larger groups. Hey, what's a game? This this is almost a gateway-ish type of a game. I think. I don't know. I think there's too many little rules. Do you? Yeah, like this is. Royal Turf or, or, you know, Winter Circle, I would. No, I'm with no, him, and no, I'll tell you I why. this is simpler than that. Yes, I would not give this to people to sure. play, but if I'm running it, yeah. easy. No, yes, but that's not that's precisely the distinction I'm making. Yeah. I wouldn't be No, like, I wouldn't just hand people the box and say, here you go. No, if I was, yeah. If, if I'm I running it, if I'm like emceeing it, it almost, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Right. I think there are, though, too many, you can... There's just a couple too many rules where I would be comfortable teaching this to people that are really, really non-gamers. Mm -hmm. And if they are kind of starting to become gamers, then I want to be managing it. Yeah. Because it's make a bet, mm -hmm. spend a buck to buy a thing, and then the tiles that go on the track, yeah. where like, if you land there, you go an extra, or you slide behind, and you actually slide under. There's a few too many a little, little things. A little bit of that, I suppose. You know what sure. I mean? Sure, sure. So, but if I'm running it, yes, I agree. Yeah. And the rambunctious nature of it does make up for maybe like one too many rules. Yeah. Now yeah, I think this is yeah, a game with wide appeal. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's a good one. 
All right, my number nine is going to be one of the few that is very much about racing in a car, jumping mm. in a car and racing around a track, around real tracks sometimes. So that's uh, going to be Formula D. Mm. Formula D, again, has been a while since I played this one. The rest of these I've definitely played more free more recently than Winter Circle and Formula D. Formula D is a dice-driven game. Uh, it is... A roll and move for all intents and purposes, but the, the main gimmick here, I suppose, being that when you shift into higher you know, uh, sh um, Gear. gears, thank you, you will roll a die that has more faces. So, you know, as you shift up, then you go from rolling a D6 to rolling a D10 or whatever it is, and now maybe you'll go eight spaces. To counteract that, you have corners in the game in which you need to stop in that corner once or twice. If you overshoot that corner because you uh, didn't downshift, then you take damage to your car. That's basically it. That's the game. Really neat that those two things, the, yeah. the crux between you can go as fast as you want, if you keep shifting up and up, you need to stop in this area. You, you have a target. That intersection makes for a really neat, interesting game. Mm. You know, are you the cautious player? who you see the corner coming and start immediately downshifting and downshifting, you, you won't miss it, you know. But then other people are pushing the edge, they're risking it, they're going to blow right by you. And they might take damage, and then they're really limping. Mm -hmm. So now they start to toe that line as well. Are they going to break down before they make it back around? That's yeah, fun. This is a fun, fast-moving racing game in which a turn might take you from here all the way to there, as opposed to, like, Hmm, I'm gonna calculate my vector and go one this way. That is that that drags me down. You know, that's yeah. that, that's too slow. This one manages to feel speedy and energetic and engaging. So Formula D, my number nine pick. This is like this is almost like the classic racing right. game right now. Yeah. yeah. Like the one thing about this game, I remember the first time I saw it, the board itself makes you want to play a racing game. Yeah. It you does. look at that board and you're like, oh, and then there's more than one board? Guess that what? There's like 30 of them. Bird's of eye view of Monaco or whatever. Sure. You're like, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's a cool right, thing. Right. And then the dice themselves. At first you're like, oh, it's a 20-sided die. Oh, no. It actually goes from like 14 to 20. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. My, I, This was on my short list, but I cut it. There's two problems I have with it I have a hard time with. One is that it can really devolve into AP. You have to really just say... You need to go because I've seen people sit there and count the number Math of spaces yeah. and then count this way and like just pick a die and roll it. Mm -hmm. And two, if someone does get ahead, it's hard to catch up. Sometimes I've seen someone, you know, gun their engine and they hit the corner perfectly. They've won because there's not a lot you can do to catch right. up with them. They mm -hmm. can play it safe the rest of the race, sure. and you have to push yourself. Maybe you'll catch up, but likely you've gotta, not. You've got to hit all those, yeah. But that's not as big of a problem if you play it. I don't normally play the whole three lap race of it. That's, that can be long. That because can be it's long, long and then it, those problems become more apparent in a yeah, three lap sure, race. Sure. One lap, if you get ahead and like, well, you're going to win, but hey, we had a fun time. Yeah. 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 I agree. All right, my number nine is uh, never been printed in English. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Because you can get it in Germany yes. for 10 bucks. That's Umreifenbleich. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's it's a, a play cycling this. game. And this won the Spiel des Jahres. Amazing to me. I'm still mind-boggled that it's never come to America and every time I think about trying to get it for like Dice Tower Essentials I, we go to Essen and I see it sold everywhere for almost nothing. It's not, yeah, it's just, it's just really <laughs> Is common. it language independent too? No, there's a few event cards in the game okay. and I all mine are printed, I, I pasted up. them up. Sure. Oh, old school. Very yeah, I know. But this game is really simple. You have a you have a team of four cyclists that they show you there, mm -hmm. and you roll two dice, and that's how far they move. It's literally a roll and move. But the person behind you can go with you, okay. and you can draft the other person. And you have those cards. You can see some in the picture that say five and six for each of the racers. You can spend one of those instead of rolling one of your dice. Mm -hmm. and, you, and then when you're on mountains, you subtract from the dice. When you're on a downhill, you add to the dice. You know, it's interesting, you were talking about a deck-building racing game. This game was reminding me of another game, because I haven't played this, that is a deck-building racing game. It's another bike racing game. It may even be on Flam Rouge. Um, this gives me a little bit of a Flam Rouge vibe, the way you're describing Flamme it. Flam Rouge is not deck-building. You have a deck. Aren't you? I've never played. 
you you're not, not buying your cards deck? for your deck. Oh, no, then no, I'm no, sorry. No. It's not a deck. It's been a while since I've played it, obviously. Flam Rouge did not make my uh, top 10 because uh, I hate it. I'm not but, a huge fan of Flam um, Rouge really? either, but yeah. This one I like a lot. Mm. You have to kind of get into the, it's a silly, a silliness mode to it. I mean, sure. you can get that from the art. Yeah, yeah. And if like you play, magazine. you don't have to play with the event cards, but if you do play with the event cards, sometimes it'll be like, you fall over and every bike behind you falls over. Right. Which actually happens in races sometimes. Sure. sure. But, but the thing I think that, that evens it all out is you have four racers. So yeah. if Z gets lucky with his one racer who's really far ahead, I'm like, well, yeah, but where are your other three racers? Right. Sure. And. It's it's entertaining, silly, and fun. So, uh, um, rife, um, rife and Brighton. <laughs> Terrible. It's wow. worse each time. It gets worse. Yeah, yeah. It's it's and uh, worse. I hope it's worth it too. I hope, it's I hope, not. I hope what we're doing is worth clear. it. It's not. It's 100 percent not worth right. it. So my number eight is another silly betting racing game um, with a little bit more going on, and and uh, this is one that you actually turned me on to. I think this was uh, this may actually show up on your list. I'll be oh interested to see. My number eight is Unicorn Fever. Which so, was originally Horse Fever, by the horse way. Horse Fever, yeah. Yeah, and again, I never played the original. Um, when I saw this come in, I was pretty skeptical, right? <laughs> to be fair, this cover this does not inspire yeah, confidence. Yeah, and then you you look at the board, and it looks like, what was the thing you used the other day? Like, oh, like someone had vomited threw up, threw Skittles. Skittles all over my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all over the board. Um, Who are looking at those horses? I mean, let me tell you what. Look, 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 look at those horses. Those unicorns, Blunt, baby. Lovely unicorns. But... To me, the, the real hook of this game, the, the thing that kind of made it stand out from other games uh, like it, are being able to play those magic cards. It's supremely chaotic, right? There's a sure. lot of chaos involved, because what you're doing is you're getting these magic cards, and you're playing them face down onto one of these horses, and you at the you know before the race starts you turn them over and kind of resolve them mm -hmm. and it might boost your horse it may back them up it, or i keep saying horse unicorn um that's true I, yeah every time i played this i played it many times i call them horses you keep calling them well, horses. the original yeah. was horses yeah, yeah but it feels like a horse race that. period right. it's hard right. to say unicorn yeah, yeah, yeah. but but this is just really silly chaotic Right on the edge of being too chaotic, you know. Right. Um, but, yes, but you yeah. get really excited about this. You stand up, he's like, do. come on! I get this super game. geeked out about it. I'm like, do it! There's one good, particularly good thing that this game does, and Horse Fever did it too. Mm -hmm. And that is, instead of having you take a turn and then move a horse or right. a unicorn, yeah. instead we do all that action prepping stuff, yes. and then it's Rolling race dice. watching time. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like a Vlada Travato <laughs> game, but where that part is fun. Just fun. <laughs> That's it. Instead of like sit and watch things go badly. Ow. In this one, you're like, come on, yeah. Plumpy. And yep. you just roll. Just just, just race. Is. Yeah, it does a great it, job. It, of... it nails that, yeah, you're you right. know? You're yeah. very right. Yep. Number eight, Unicorn Fever. They're so cute. Mm -hmm. This is not on your list. I don't this think. is not on my list, but I thought about it. Horse Fever. I came across Horse Fever. I was like, mm. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that that pepper incident. You know the one. <laughs> yeah, um, I do remember that one. All right, my number eight is uh, one that I thought of, and maybe it's the one you thought of, maybe it's not. When you said deck building and racing game. Okay. This is the slowest racing game on my list by far. Wow. Ooh, ooh, let me guess. A slow racing game. Is it a, is it a, are they cars? There are cars? No. Are there explorers? Yeah. Oh, oh, I know what it is! Mm. I know what it is! This is the game you I was said, thinking of. Are there Clarks? I could have said yes. <laughs> Lewis and Clark. I don't think I oh, would say that. And this wait. is not the game I was thinking of. Really? I, as soon as he said th <laughs> but this is, yeah, this is... It's the slowest no. race game on Earth. Yeah, yeah. So Lewis and Clark, the expedition is of technically a racing game. Yeah. But racing too. The other side of the uh, the continental United States here, down that river there and over those mountains, you are going to be buying new cards. It's a bit of a hand-building game. It's not really a deck-building game. Kind of, You're either holding of. all the cards you own or you've played them. Yeah. And then eventually you do a rest action and just pick them all up again. So you're sort of, you know, managing your hand of cards. So you can do that. You can play a card, take an action, gather resources, 
move your canoe down the river or maybe you know hop on a horse and jump over some mountains and then you're also dealing with Native Americans and them helping you achieve different things you can buy cards which is just represents more explorers that are in your party largely and they'll have their own abilities the game is very slow <laughs> that racing part is yeah there Tec technically it is the kind where like once you cross you do win yeah, I yeah. mean that it is a race it's a race it's just it's fall it falls to the background a little bit and it is the theme of the game in many ways but I like it I do enjoy this game I think mechanically it is interesting and robust I don't like playing with more than two if I can help yeah, it it's too long the game definitely will outstay its welcome at four like I guarantee you it'll outstay its welcome and at three it might you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you have a, a lower player count and you like the, the, the trappings here, the thematic uh, implementation, the setting, then I do recommend it. Just be aware it's not an uproarious racing game. This is the exact opposite of something like Unicorn. I don't theme. like it because it's that slow. I can yeah. actually recognize, like, hey, this is a yeah, game yeah. people like. It's a good game. For me, I just, I'm like, come on. I want to say this is the first game, I could be wrong, but I want to say this is the first game that drew my attention to Vincent Dutrait. I think this may be the first really? game that he illustrated where I was like, whoa, who is this person? Yeah, that could be. That uh, could be. It's, it's yeah. got some years on it now. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I, I like it. Like I said, Lewis and Clark. All right, my number t nine was <coughs> Boom Right from Brighton, which has something I really like in racing games that's drafting. It's yeah. a silly game. So does my number eight has this drafting, but it's a more serious game, mm. um, and very serious, uh, and it's formula, and not formula day, it's um, NASCAR, and that's Thunder Alley. Now, Oof. it's not NASCAR, it's just straight up. I did not like this You did game. not if like this one. If it's the one I'm thinking of, I did not like it. Well, Thunder Alley is a game, again, where you control several cars into playing this yeah, game. I hated this with everything in my I hated, <laughs> hated, hated, hated. Do you hate it because it's fiddly with the little I pieces? I hate it because it's fiddly, and it's slow. Well. Technically, this does not feel to me. It's like you're supposed to be like feeling like NASCAR. This is like technically each time you go around the track, you've gone around a hundred times. I'm, oh, not, I'm not kidding. I believe it. Yeah, you feel that's, like that's you what have. they're saying. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's about a hundred times too long. That makes sense. <laughs> wow. I do wish the game looked nicer. This yeah, one, it's if a this GMT. had a nicer look game, well. I'm not even criticizing GMT's productions as much yeah. because the board and stuff. It's that the cars. Like, if you ever played this game with Richard Lawney at a convention, <laughs> he comes in with little yeah, mini cars yeah, that are painted cool. up. And I'm like, oh, well, I want that. Yeah. I'm going to go home now and put my copy in the garbage. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah he like, he lo he's a huge fan of this game, and he's got one blinged up one. In fact, didn't he do a NASCAR themed game after he was a big fan of this one. I think you're right. I can't remember what it was. It was though. a Kickstarter, I think, from Maybe. someone. Yeah. yeah but yes. Oh, right. he had something to do with the expansion or the Maybe next that's one. It. Maybe yeah, that's he really loves this game. game. I like it a lot too. It's really fun. I love that drafting. Yeah. It's a it is think about if you combined a racing game with GMT. <laughs> okay. True. So that there is, is some things like there are three different ways to draft. You can mm -hmm. draft behind someone, draft in front of someone where you pull someone. There's different yeah. kinds. It's not as clean and fast as in Bright from Brighton, but it's also probably a better game. There's more strategy Mechanically, in this one. Mechanically, absolutely. Yeah. This is so, more of a, this is closer to a sim feeling almost than it's not, but it feels closer to like a sim. Like the sims you mean? No, a simulation of a race, you know what I Maybe mean? Maybe someday we'll see a streamlined version of this. Mm. That's I don't want it to go all the way down to Umrah from Brighton, but yeah. I want it to come maybe down a little bit. Then that, that game would just rock. But yeah. I do like it anyway. Thunder Alley. All right. All right. All right. So my number seven kind of breaks my own rule about racing games, which is that I want them to kind of feel like a race. I want them to kind of have that feeling of... of you know, speed and forward momentum and things along those lines. Um, I think I can even beat you for slowest racing game out there. Snail pace. It's slower, I think, than Lewis and Clark. The tortoise. Um, and, and I the guarantee tortoise. you, this is one that's not on either of your lists because when I brought it up on other lists, 
you're like, you're always like, you're the only person on the planet who likes this game, but I do like it. It is Expedition Northwest Passage. Oh. Um, and this is a racing game. It is. It absolutely is. However, he's right, it's slower it's than yours. It's slower than Lewis and Clark. <laughs> huh. um, but this does some really, really neat things, in my opinion. You know, one of the big hooks to it is it has this kind of a, a tracker around the outside that is, uh, you can see that, that, that blue and yellow token that's going to determine whether the water is frozen or it is not frozen. Okay. If it's not frozen, then you can take your boat, your ship, through the water. Once it's frozen, you have to kind of take the sled and then you're moving on it as if it was, you know, ice. Um, okay. And you have to get to the Northwest Passage and then back, so you're starting in Greenland, you have to get to the Northwest Passage and back to win. However, you're also trying to do exploration, right? In, in, in addition to getting, finding the Northwest Passage and getting back home, you're trying to explore and, and, and so you've got these kind of things that are, you, you know what your goal is, but you also have things that are distracting you. Right. And it's like, okay, do I take this risk to go down here and do a little bit more exploring, knowing mm -hmm. I may not get back, I may get trapped, like you may get iced in, and that could be a problem. So um, It is it, a problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it can, be. can be a problem. It, 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 it ah, is a problem if it be. happens to you, yes. Uh, but I think it's a really unique design, um, but it uh, doesn't feel really like a race, but it is a racing game, and I no, like it. No, now that you say that, it definitely is a racing game, because yeah. it's first there and back. Yeah, yeah. I have not played this. It sounds intriguing. I yeah. mean, it looks cool. I it's like an older game. Board. I mean, it's been out for... This isn't that old, though, is it? Mm, what, eight it's... years, maybe? Ten years? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. I guess that's... Not that Ish, old. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not yeah, yeah, ancient, yeah. But, but yeah, it's... it's Is there so, any cannibalism in it? Did uh, you get well, trapped in the It's ice? implied. It's implied cannibalism. <laughs> All right. Uh, talk to me when the expansion comes out. <laughs> but yeah, no, the I, Northwest I, Passage. It's it's a unique Donner. game, and you know um, if you've read or seen, they, they made an adaptation uh, adaptation uh, of uh, there was a I can't think of what it is, so I'm not going to suggest it. There was a book that 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 kind of gives this vibe. Anyway, with the Dan Ed, Simmons book, I yeah, mean, like a yeah, novel yeah. you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, yes. Not a not a nonfiction book. No, not a nonfiction book. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It's that Dan Simmons uh, right. book, uh, uh, The Terror. I think it's just called The Terror. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this gives me that. Vibe. They had a TV show. Of that. That's what I'm saying. So if yeah, that too was. Yeah, because I have the novel, mm -hmm. and I saw that they had a TV show. It looked very good. I only good. watched a little bit of it, but I was like, whoa, this is a high caliber yeah. TV show. Wait, isn't that the good. one where pretty much everyone dies on the ship? You need to watch Let's your mouth. Not spoil it. Spoiler alert! No, no, it starts off. No, I. That was so depressing. Yes. Yeah, why do you think I watch TV? <laughs> right. It's not to feel better about right. myself. That's correct. The book <sighs> is fantastic, too. The book is a very good book. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. All right. Anyway, my number seven, Expedition Northwest Passage. My number seven favorite book of all time is from Arthur C. Clarke. It is a book called Power Boats. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Power Boats. I thought boats. this might make your list. Yeah. This is Power like... Boats, I'm the, I'm the only one who talks about this. Mm -hmm. it's, well, you know what? Maybe you'll get lucky because... I just saw that Basket Boss is being I reprinted, know. which is a very esoteric <laughs> game that I like. And I was yeah. like, well, if they're doing that, they're going to do the whole line. You right. know this one's coming back. I uh, guess so. Well, actually, this did come back from Kowali as power ships mm. set oh, in I, space. Did I play that one? I think and I, I don't know. I never did play that one. never saw it. Power Boats is, I guess, a slightly simpler version of that. But they're very much the same thing. This one does another... One of those Formula D things in which you get to speed up or slow down trying to not hit these islands mm -hmm. and go around the buoys. So there's a path that is free form, but you just, as long as you go around the buoy in the direction you're supposed to, then you're good. You go, so you weave this path around and then make it through the end goal. And yes, you're supposed to race like three times or whatever. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, for one thing, the scoring goes insane because it's like, if you're the winner in the first race, two points. If you're the winner in the second race, four. Then eight. Then it's like, so why did we race the first three times? Right, you right, know? right. But anyway, you can do whatever you want. I do like the three-sided dice that come into in, in this game. Oh, tell me more. Tell I mean, me more. They're like these per pearlescent blue aquamarine oh. kind of dice with just three faces. I love it. And on your turn... Every time it's your turn, you can add a die. I'm looking at them behind. Or right subtract now. the die 
to your pool, like your speed. Okay. Oh, I have those. So you yeah. add a die or you subtract one, and then you may re-roll whatever you want. Mm. So if you add one, obviously you need to roll at least that one. But so you could, I could have a two, two, one. My speed is five. I'm thinking I might want to slow down a little bit. So I might remove a two and roll the other two again. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't re-roll the one. So I'd re-roll the two, a maybe two. get a three on that one. So I'm like, okay, I'm at four. I slowed down a little bit. Mm. Or you could, but then when you gun, this really when it's fun. All right. When you go around a buoy and you know you have a long shot, and you're like two, two, one, one, add a die, re-roll both ones, boom, and you just, just yeah, it's just, this is fun. This is a fun game. You'll take damage as you ram into things. You'll you'll beat up your uh, speedboat. This is neat. Have you played this? I'm not actually. Hmm. I, I think, think I you would Power like. Ships, I think you I would think. like this one. Yeah. Is there cannibalism? Uh, it depends how quickly you hit the islands. Got it. What okay. is it is possible as you hit Are you one. Are Tony Topper today? He's, what is, he's brought it As up you first. hit the island, you fly <laughs> out of the ship, and if anyone's standing in your way, <laughs> <laughs> this is my number seven. Power, Power boats. boats. All right. My, my number seven is a crossover with Mike. It's Camel Up. Oh, okay. Just because Camel Up. Yes. <laughs> Camel Up. I like this game. I will say I have found, thanks to Z, that occasionally yeah. a wrong group yes, that is does true. not work. Because we played that one time, thanks I was to me. <laughs> well, no, because you, uh, I was like, this new version's great. I played it. I played several games of it. I played one at the game shop where people were screaming and yelling. Yeah. And then I think we played it live here during one of our things, mm -hmm. and it was like, do 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 do. He was like, that's the game. <laughs> You hated everything about it. I don't remember that. It, was, it, was, definitely it just happened to the, be. Yeah. It just happened to be one of those games. Sometimes there's there's an occasional one. Campbell just gets out really far ahead, and everyone bets on that Campbell. Sometimes it yeah. doesn't and work it keeps out. Keeps happening. Right. Sometimes it, the the luck messes you up. Sure. I don't think that you might be thinking of someone else because I did not play this for the first time with you. No, you played the second edition for the first time with me. Okay. But anyway, I was talking about the black and the white camels and how much fun they had. Yeah. They really do. Right. I like the backwards camels. I love the fact that you can sometimes calculate the odds, and they're hard to calculate because sure. it's what dice will come out and then what number they'll roll right. in what order. But it's fun. You're like, it could happen. You yeah, could yeah. Ha no, you can definitely have crazy things that shouldn't happen happen. Right. Which if everything fun. lines up just right, it could happen. Yeah. Yeah, so this one's a lot of fun. Camel up. That's none of your business. <laughs> I really don't know what's none going on. I, I don't know, but by, by, oh, by the time it. we get to number one, whatever contraption he's got going on <laughs> back here will be revealed. I'm just fixing my pants, okay? Well, okay. My number six is a game that I have a sneaking suspicion... Is going to be a crossover. Uh -huh. I'm calling it right now. I think this might be our one three-way crossover on this list. Really? Because well, I was kind no, of hoping for Cam up, but I don't no, think, I think he put it on his list. I don't think so either. There might be two. My number six is a game that has been re-implemented by Restoration Games. Oh. My number six is Downforce. Uh, so mm. Downforce was a, a Wolfgang Cromer. What was it originally called? It, it was um, had a few names. It's had a number of different names. But anyway, um, I've never played any of the. Old I have ones. not either. I've only played Downforce, and and uh, it's a terrific, terrific racing game, a betting game where you are doing incremental, like you 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 can change your bet midway through the race, right. and oftentimes you will because the car you were hoping you know early on and obviously your odds are going to go your payoffs are going to go down the further into the race you're betting as would you would expect but this is another game that with a group that gets into it can just mm -hmm. be so much fun and and it's a very simple rule set uh, just a very very simple rule set i think almost anyone can understand the basics of you're playing cards out of your hand that just tell you which car is going and how far they're going yeah. and sometimes you can get other cars in front of you that cause issues. They've added new kind of tracks that have loop-de-loops and jumps and all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I gotta um, get that. My get favorite, that one. Yeah. My favorite is the that. Safari because animals just walk right. in front of the car right. and you're like right. well I gotta stop. It's on the other side of the jump board. You get everyone's excited about the jumping. Yeah, they don't. But they the don't. other one, you have these these I elephants and animals. I, yep. I, there's been two expansions. Mm -hmm. That's the second expansion. There's one called Danger Circuit. That's the right. first one. That's the, the one. That's with where the they figure cross. eight. 
And there's another one after that. Mm -hmm. That has a jump on one side and, and animals safari. on the other side. I don't side. have that expansion. I, I have the first expansion is very good. Yeah. You get two more boards in right. there and some card powers and stuff. Sure. Then the second expansion, whichever one it is, that I need to get on that because I yeah I really like this. I one thought too. I would love the the jumps more, right. but I actually like these animals because they just, just move in front way. of cars, <laughs> right. and then cars like well I don't want to hit an elephant, you know? So yeah, yeah. come on, let's go. That's great. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a this is a really really just I think a a very easy to introduce to people if someone has an interest in playing a racing game and they yeah. yeah, let's play downforce, you know? And it prioritizes fast. that speed. It really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and. Uh, you know, I think they can continue to release new tracks and add some more fun to it. And if you have a chance, find that Mario. Oh, absolutely. Find the Mario Kart, Mario Kart Monopoly. Cards. Yeah, you trade them and out. And put those cards into the perfect size. 100%. Really? Well, you, we have them in our library. <laughs> it's all Mario Kart, baby. Oh. Yeah, it, it definitely helps. Hit to me. Down fours. Let's go. All right, my number five, six, six. is a crossover Ooh. with... Mike Delisio and Tom Vassell. This is Camel Up. We have a three way crossover. Three way cross. No, we got to make a camel sound. I just did. They spit, don't they? I don't know. I don't know what a camel sounds like, but I'm pretty sure that's not it. How many camels have you been around? A lot. They're always in the zoo, but I always see them doing this. But it's during the day, though. Also, I think what I hear here in the Florida Everglades is. Uh, actually, a camel. That's a camel. Got I think, it. Uh, <laughs> camels hiss, don't they? I think camels hiss. I don't know, they but spin yeah. I'm going to lean more do. towards that <laughs> than whatever I'm hearing yeah, over here. Right, fine, He's you know? definitely doing a morning Maybe dog. I've never been to the zoo in my life or know what a camel is. <laughs> my number uh, six, like I said, is Camel Up. These guys already talked about a really fun, rambunctious game of silliness. Mm -hmm. Quick, too. I like that this one's pretty quick. Yes, it is. You know, and, and it's multiple cycles of bets. Right. Like, this is not one long race. It is one long race. But well, no, it's one scoring, short race, really. Yeah, you're scoring short. legs, though, is what I'm saying. Right. It's actually at the end of a leg, when all those dice come out, right. that you actually then get payouts. Mm -hmm. So it happens a few times in the game. It's yes. not like one big loop, and then it's over. Right. And I like that about it, because you feel like you get rewarded throughout the game, not just putting it all in one basket at the end. Yeah. So, Camel Up, second edition. That's the best one. That's my number six. All right, my number six is another crossover with Mike Delicia. Oh, my goodness. He said it would be, because it is Unicorn mm. Fever. Yeah. Oh, you I, love it. If there's one thing I tend to like in my racing games, it's chaos. And yes. this one has it. But Mike's, Z was right. Uh, you were right picking it, but Z was right. You, you play all that cards. You get everything ready. Right, yeah, yeah. And then you watch basically a drag race, <laughs> yeah. because they're just running straight down the board. Yeah. It, you, you turn over a card. You, you know what the odds are. Yeah. So you turn over cards. The odds you usually are going to make the faster horses win, mm -hmm. or unicorns, <laughs> but you roll these dice and you never know. <laughs> you never and also know. that fast unicorn, someone tied a, a chain around right, its legs so it's it, running yeah. slower. And right. so like you're trying to guess what everyone bet on. And honestly, I still do wish there was a way to just do that race I know. without all the trappings of getting money, turning the money into victory points. Right, I agree. I yeah. almost would just cut the victory points out in total, just make the whole thing money. Mm -hmm. Unicorn Fever, the dice game. There you go. Ah, you know it? Because that race, it's so fun. It's great. It is fun. Yeah. It's great. Everyone's cheering and yelling for the, the you unicorns. You put up with the rest of the game. To get to that, it's like this isn't that compelling, but it's worth it because of the payoff. It's kind so of. That's kind of why it's not on my list because yeah. I do feel like that race is fantastic. That's good, and the rest to put it on is my okay. List, but that's good. That that's no, it's, never it's been that bad. good. And I don't mind the other stuff. The only thing I mind maybe about Unicorn Fever is that at the end you're like, okay, money is not points. Right. You can go into debt. Because there's money and points, and so it's confusing yes. to people which one they're getting yeah. sometimes. I, I really think a single currency would have helped. Just sure. the most money wins. Sure, sure. But that being said, it's still a lot of fun, and the fat unicorns, especially <laughs> how he painted ours, and they look really oh, cute, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that really helps. It you know, does. having little fun things to race it around makes a does. big difference in racing games. Yes, I agree. And if you get the Mario uh, Kart Monopoly, That's it. You, just... you can put the unicorns in the carts and then race them. So it's like a fat unicorn on top of Yo uh, Yoshi. Yoshi race. Um, 
stop. That's a good All struggle. Right. Anyway, my number six, Unicorn Fever. Love it. Sorry. Oh, I see what we got here. We got the racing stripes. I forgot to put them on. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is a, a very long setup for a very... Uh, right, yeah. You should also have some backwards. type the of... Uh, I know! It's on backwards! You also you should like have some sponsorship uh, uh, logos on you, Tom. Right, we should forward. have like an STP logo on right, your go ahead. <gasps> <laughs> No, he's going to pull all the way back and just let it snap. No, I'm I've been there before. You. My number five is a crossover with, I believe, Z Garcia. Uh, my number five of people is Winner's Circle. Winner's Circle. Yes, indeed. So we've talked a fair amount about this, so I don't think that uh, I'm going to elaborate too much more on it, other than I do agree with you in that this is very much a Kinesia version of a racing uh, betting game where you can feel the mathematical underpinnings yes. of everything. Yes. But there's still enough... You know, with with the dice and stuff, there's still enough to still give it the feeling of a race, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, there, I agree. It, it definitely still feels like a race, um, but it's very much, you know, there's a mechanical element too. But it's still, it, it's just a good, good, solid racing <laughs> game. So what are we laughing <laughs> get about? This suspenders on. I'm sorry. Oh, like, I feel like such a dork. You, are, you look like an absolute <laughs> what idiot. Is that? Yeah. From the back. That's because I tried to put them on without, mm. like, during the the tenth or one. I meant to put these on earlier. Uh huh. This is, this is, wow. This is how I get dressed every day. It's like coming to work and he's like, fix it. Right. My pants are on backwards. I, I, from I'm this gonna... angle, what I, what's going on here is very, very, very confusing. Hey. There we go. That's a good look. My number five is <laughs> winners. as good as it gets, Tom. Circle. Wait, uh -huh. he already did this one. That's what I'm saying. It's a crossover. I didn't have too much more to say. We, we talked about it a fair bit. Yeah. All right. Where am well, I this at? did not make mine, but I like it a lot. Yeah. All right, my number five has not been on anyone's list. I don't know why this, this one, I think, uh, gets lumped in my head mm. and just in general with Power Boat, so it does not seem to get a lot of love. But I like it a lot. This is Snow Tales. Yeah, I haven't played this. I knew it would be on your list. Wow, list. I thought this would be actually, like, in your top two. It's in my top five. <laughs> is that not good enough for you? Barely. Why no, you come I talk just, to me after you learn how to I, put on suspension? That's correct. <laughs> okay? Snow Tales <laughs> is... <laughs> A horse-inspired dog Shut up, racing Chris. game. What, what did Chris say? This is a national embarrassment. <laughs> this is a national embarrassment, uh, Tom. Uh, At woo! least it's not an international incident. I mean, wow. you're, you're close, but we're not quite right. there yet. Uh, this one is... You build up a track of, of pieces of, of this race, mm -hmm. so it can go into all sorts of weird, bendy twisty turny curves like that and then you are you have your sled with your horses there you know it's being pulled the main twist here being you're you're playing cards from your own little deck of cards numbered cards and you can play one to your brakes and then one to one side or the other side of your sled, your ho your your horse, your dog's strength. How Just much, hear those sleigh bells ring. <laughs> how much they're they're pulling, mm -hmm. and the difference between the one number on the one side and the number on the other is how much you drift that way. So as you see something in your way, you need to make these dogs pull you know harder basically right so that you can drift that way from the total of the two cards you subtract the break that's how you slow down or speed up and the two cards is how you move around the track mechanically it's a little tricky sometimes for folks to figure out okay wait wait where, where do i play the number if i want to go that way you know where, yeah. how does this work out but once you internalize that it shouldn't take more than a couple of turns it's just fun and lively. You don't have every card you want available to you either. And as you take, you have a hand limit of like five cards. As you hit the side or run into another sled, you draw a damage card mm. that just sits in your hand. Yeah, it clogs it up. And it just clogs up your hand. So you have fewer and fewer things in your hand. And that's a really elegant way to deal with damage. Yeah. You know, I really like that. It's That's just, almost a deck building kind of thing happening. Almost, yeah. but you just that card just sits there. You right. never can discard it. Hmm. So, yeah, this is just a good one. I like the theme. There's not a lot that are about this, you know, uh, dog sledding thing. Mm -hmm. I like the track building. I like the the different obstacles, trees, and uh, 
you know, caver, k- k- um, chasms and whatnot. Yeah, this is fun. I really like this one. Now, my my edition that I have at home is not this Renegade one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a um, an Asmo Day one from 2007 or six. Frager Brothers. No, no Lamont it's Brothers. after they they did it. Oh, they did it. Then Asmo Day picked it up. Sorry, it's Frager. There's the company because it's right. Frazier and Gordon Lamont. Yeah, right. Yeah, Fragor Games. Um, no, the Asmo Day printing before Asmo Day was like. Day. <laughs> they also put out games, and that's the one I have. I think it's prettier than this one. Um, mm. But yeah, this this looks largely. I actually the same. like the unpublished. Well, I mean, they published it, but it was never picked up. Sequel to this, Safari Tales, where you were racing through the oh, Safari. Oh, you mean Savannah Tales? Savannah Tales. Savannah, emus, or weren't you racing emus or something yeah. like that? Yeah, that was published. I mean, it by then. No, I meant it wasn't republished. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so back in the day, the. Uh, Lamont Brothers published a game every year that was about animals. And they published some really cool ones and some really bad ones. It was like yeah. every other year. Um, this is probably the most famous of all of them. This is their most famous game. I would think so, tell yeah. the most famous. I would think so, yeah. And then maybe Sheer Panic would be the second most famous. Sheer Panic, yeah. They just had they had different games and they always had clever ideas. It was mm-hmm. just two brothers come together and they made a game. Yeah. So, yeah. This is my favorite of theirs, yeah. And it's a... My, it's in my top five racing games, I would say. When I was a kid, one of the best video game racing games was Pole Position, yes. right? And that's fun. Yeah. But the, I think the video game that changed racing, like how people view racing, Cru- Cruising no, USA. Outrun. <laughs> cruising USA, yeah, maybe. I played that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, Mario Kart. Yeah. And there's a whole genre of Mario Kart Racing games. Diddy I've Kong re- Racing. I've reviewed at least 10 of them. Diddy Kong Racing is not nearly as good. Um, Sonic All-Stars. Uh, uh, Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> anyway, the whole idea of racing around a track, shooting stuff at each other, yeah. messing each other up. It's fun. And it's fun for the whole family. So this is the newest game on my list, and that's Dodo's Riding Dinos. Uh, I've still oh, played this one. Okay, okay. Because this one does it because it keeps it from breaking the cardinal rule of a race game, which is don't make the race game slow. It's yeah. called a race. And this one's really fast. Everyone plays a card at the same time. From a hand of cards, you flip them over. The red cards are better than blue, but if two people play red cards, or two or more people play red cards, then the the special ability doesn't activate, and you just get the number on it. Got it. Okay. okay. And then you're also throwing physical objects at the other dinosaurs. You're dropping a meteorite, rolling a log, flipping a banana, trying to hit the other ones, and when you hit someone, you do damage, which just means they lose cards from their hand, giving them fewer options. If all the cards from your hand are gone, you move back three spaces, draw a new hand, full cards. That's smart. That's it. When you say throwing physical things, but you're you literally like... throwing objects at the other players at the table. <laughs> oh, no, at the board. No? Oh, see. You are, f- there's a dexterity element to this? Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I know that your enthusiasm is just right dimmed a now. lot, but... You know what? In this one, it's just silly fun. And it's not also... You know what it reminds me of a lot? And <laughs> Z was excited for a moment. Now you can see the, the life draining from I was trying to him. slowly deflate. Yeah, it yeah. made me laugh. The, the <laughs> thing I like about this the most is the... I mean, the thing I would compare it to most is Terra Meeple City or Rampage. Yeah. You know, in that one, okay. you're flicking and you're yeah. blowing. Not today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're doing different things. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. But that's what it feels like. Yeah. This is really entertaining. Dodo's riding dinos. All right. (laughs) I'm about to take this. Stop! Stop it! I just figured I better like. You know what? While you do this, I'm rails. just gonna stand up. There we go. Here we go. And put my be... suspenders Are on like live, a man. Baby? <laughs> Make Tell me we're live. Happen. Give me your <laughs> thumbs <laughs> now. So Let's see. You can't thumb this thumbs up. Thumbs up, folks. That's right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the <laughs> kind of content you've been wanting. Let's see if we can this get This is to... what you're going to get. Let's see if we can get to 300 thumbs by the time Tom gets his suspenders. Here we go. 145. Come on now. I don't have to put suspenders on standing up. 145. 147. That's not quite 300. All right, right, here we go. This is how you do it. Okay. We're at number four. Go ahead. My number four is a two-player racing game uh, where you are not racing in cars. You are not racing as camels. You're racing each other. You are flying majestically across landscapes that you are playing out in the form of cards. (laughs) Okay. 
I got it. This is Odin's Ravens. Got it. You're, you're um, burning. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is a race game. It's absolutely a race game. Yeah, this is a game um, that uh, I got into playing with my wife. Uh, Tiffany and I like playing Odin's Ravens, where it's, it's a very simple game where you are, just like I said, playing out, uh, as you can see, these cards that represent different... Um, Landscapes that, that actually the cards make up your track, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're playing cards that show you if you can, you know, if you can go across that landscape. You also have some special ability cards that uh, they're, I think they're Loki cards because this is themed around Odin. Right. And, and, and it kind of can be tricky. You can change some orders of, of the cards, you can move them around. There's two editions. This that you're seeing here, the Osprey edition, is the current edition. The old one, you'll, you'll never find yeah, the you old one. You won't find the old point. version. I don't. They're just, they're one and the same. I mean, they made some slight uh, mechanical changes in this new edition. Um, I don't know whether if it's better or worse. I think they're pretty close either way. But yeah. uh, just a, a, a yeah, I remember thinking it's so similar. They that they're very the similar. One. They simplified it a bit. Yeah, yes. the new one is simpler than the old one. That that's the main difference. That, that's correct. But yeah, this is uh, again a fast game. Very simple to teach and, and, and get into with some really, I think, lo lovely looking art and components that yeah. help as well. So, uh, a game that doesn't get talked about all that much, but I like it quite a bit. Odin's Raven. I just, number, why did I, I just talk four, about yeah. this one. Was it on one of your lookbacks? It might have been. Mm. That must be what it was. My only issue with this production of the game is this is when Osprey Games was still doing those. Uh, rubbery feeling cards. Oh, yeah, that's true. They had a few games there. I don't know what if it was a manufacturer is issue or what, but mm. their cards feel tacky is not quite the right word, but sort of rubberized. Yeah, it has a little something on them. But There's something. Game... They don't slide. Yeah. They so so I really I really just like that feel. This game also suffered from a slight wave of negativity. Because in between the Osprey printing and the old tam uh, the old two player Cosmos game, that's right. There was the Kickstarter where yeah. the guy literally just stole everyone's money, which is terrible, of course. Uh, you know, right? But no, it has nothing yeah. to do with and the it game. And it wasn't but... like, uh, oh, he never got around to delivering. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, the guy just took people's money and ran. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people were annoyed about that. And then sure. I think some of that, the, which is a the shame. buzz was gone. Yeah. It, it might have done better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the game is good though. All right, my number four is a crossover. Uh, I don't think you've mentioned it yet, but I know you did. Downforce, of yeah. course. Downforce is... trying to read into my things. It'll come up. Um, there's racing as a genre. Because it's right now! It's my number four, too. It is? Oh! Yeah. oh. 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 Three-way crossover. It's rough. It's rough. <laughs> um... Yeah, this is... It is my number four, right? <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't change the slide, so I thought maybe I messed that mm. up there. There you go, look. Oh, there. look at that. Get these out of time. Get me out of there. It's my turn to talk. So. <laughs> Interrupt. Interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. Go ahead. Take it away. Mike said everything I wanted to say. Say something. Mm. No, actually, he covered everything, too. Stop it. Yeah. Top it somehow. Top it. Go ahead. Somehow top his Bring in the marvelous cannibals. mastery of Bring the English language. Bring in the cannibals. This is... The gateway racing game, maybe? Probably. Like, this is the game that if someone says, if I'm buying a gift for a family, mm -hmm. this is one of the games I'd consider. But they could play yeah. without me. Well, they they even released mm -hmm. a Target-specific edition of this. That's true. Um, That's right. Yeah. So th this very much, I feel like, is... If you want to talk about mass market games, you could call this a mass market game now. Sure. It's a good one, right? You, you, you can find good mass market games, but... Uh, <laughs> They're, they're, you know, maybe not as often as, as you would like, but this is one of them. I like it, obviously. Back to you. Back back to I, I cede my place to you, sir. I give the remainder of my time <laughs> to Mike Delisio. I will fill it to myself. To the gentleman from... <laughs> We do need more downforce maps. We do. Restoration game so busy working on Return to Dark Tower. I want to return to Dark Tower. Downforce map. But on the other side, Thunder Road downforce. They should do that. They should yes, do that. Go for Rolling Realms. Uh, the Rolling yeah, Realms route. The, the, the product. I would actually be excited about that, though. I know. That Racing cool. through various board games. Think of that. The, the Dark Tower has collapsed, so it's a broken... Mm. And you're racing up the tower or down the tower. 
All right, I'm in. I'm in on this. Huh? I like that idea. And then and then go over to other games. Just yeah. like slide in. What other games can you think of? That the, Agricola, you have to it's feed your, the guy to eat a sandwich oh, the probably, whole time or he dies. It probably Fireball would be Island. I mean, oh, you're oh, trying to outrace games. like fireballs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. Come on now. This this stuff it writes itself. <laughs> I feel like we're right there. All right, that's all. Right. Uh, both of our number fours. <laughs> All right, my number three is the game on my list that I've played most recently. I played this game on Saturday. Really? It's that high? I'm going to tell you something right now. Well, it's that high, yes, because this game is in my top 100. Also, the game is really stupid. I, I'm just going to put it right out there. My number three is Formula E. This is a game that I've got some personal it sounds kind like a of brand affection of milk. for. All right, so you brought up Formula D. You're racing cars. I'm bringing in Formula E. You're racing elephants. Yeah. Objectively, the game is really, really dumb. It's, it's goofy. Completely. I don't know how to say if it's dumb, but it's goofy. Well, I guess dumb in the sense that it is like super high on the chaos factor. So you've sure. got the, the designer. The designers are Bruno Fiduti, who's known for chaos. Yes. generally speaking, yeah. and the designers of Sheriff of Nottingham, yeah. right? So that team put this together, where you are racing elephants around a track, and you've got at least as many special power cards as you do cards that move your elephant, right? Yeah. So basically, you've got these green cards that are like basic movement. If you play a green three, you move your elephant three, but it has to move straight forward. And if there are other elephants in front of you, you push those elephants forward, too. If there's a sacred cow in front of you, you can't move because you got to go around the sacred cow. However, However, you can play a, mo a mouse card to bring mouse around and scare the cows into the to elephants to make them back up. Or you can play a mango juice card that lets you go diagonally. My favorite card in any game. Or you game. can play a flying carpet mango card. Mango juice. Right. A flying carpet card where you get on your elephant. Wait, you're not making stuff up. No, this is all this real. Is all this is all true. real. Your There's elephant. actually a mango juice card. Yeah, Absolutely. you slather up the elephant in mango juice and you can right. squeeze between there two mango, other elephants. There are mango, I'm not kidding. Yeah, there are you mango can move trees. diagonally. <laughs> There are mango trees on the board, yeah. Uh, and you can play a, a flying carpet card that lets you fly over the uh, the other elephants and over the cows. It, again, it's super chaotic because, you know, you've got to just deal with what you've got in your hand. And, yeah. and many times you're just going to get hosed and you're going to get, tr you know, cornered in by cows. And then you've got to move the cows around before you can move again. Um, not a lot of strategy. Uh, it's very tactical. It's like, let me hope I can get cards to, to, to play. But I it's just a lot of take that. A lot of take that. It's just so silly fun, though. I mean, if you've got the group that is into it and they're prepared for just let's see what happens and, and trash sure. talk each other and have fun, this is, this is a game, again, that objectively is it the best game on this list? Not even close. Sure. But I like it. Oh, good. I've Keep that in of, mind. I've had a lot of good experiences of with it. So my number three... Formula E. Unfortunately, it's been long out of print. I mean, uh, yeah, but I think if you really wanted to find this one, the people who you could <laughs> probably—it's not like being I don't think prized they made that many. They though. tried to set. This was a Kickstarter game. It actually they failed the first the, Kickstarter. No, no, it failed the second Kickstarter. They tried to re to, to reprint it, and that oh. failed. But if you look on Board Game Geek right now, it says re-implemented by Elephant Rally. So there, I think that they are bringing out a new version of this. I was always amused they just called it Formula E, and on Which the dice library, it's right next to Formula D, just yeah. to confuse people. And they had to get permission from Asmodee. Well, they, they, they chose asked. to. They, they, cho they chose, they to, chose ask. to get uh, permission from Asmodee. So was there that, you go. Uh, what was that? Uh, mango juice? Yeah. Mango that juice? Was mango juice. What's your number three? My number three is a Knizia classic. Modern Royal classic. Turf. No, you did Royal Turf. The Quest for El Dorado. Oh, this is a deck building racing game, sir. Aha, uh -huh, you're right. I forgot about this That's one. That's right, yes, of course. Of this course. is the one I was thinking of when you brought it up earlier. Yes, the Quest for El Dorado is what you would call a racing game. It has cards. Some might even call it a deck building game. Mm -hmm. I refuse to. Because uh, <laughs> this Reiner is the game Kansia that does this not is the play game. other people's games. Well, but this is the game that, that this <laughs> was the first deck building game. This was the game that invented deck building as a, me as a mechanism. Oh, I see. I thought it was Dominion, but I was mistaken. Nah. In this one, you are moving your explorer across various land types 
trying to make it to, I guess, the temple or the wherever Maybe you're trying going. to get to the to the, the, the city of city Go. City of Dorado. Go. Oh, yeah. well, the city Dorado of means oh. the Dorado. Oh. That's the what it is. The city of gold, the greatest cartoon when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And you are, yes, buying new cards, playing those cards. It's got a really neat funneling effect where you can only buy one of these, like, six kinds. Mm -hmm. But once that small deck runs out, the next person who would buy one can now pick from all of the stuff. Yeah. If they want to. And if then they buy one of those and the rest of them get locked as one of the six things everybody else can buy. Tiny little twist. That's very smart. clever. Mm -hmm. You know that. I call that the, the ratchet funneling uh, mechanism. <laughs> um, and I, I do enjoy this one a lot. It's, this is... I don't know why I often in my head when I'm thinking of a simple deck building game, this one gets defaulted to racing. Mm. Like... If I think of racing games, I think of this. Yeah. If I think of deck building games, for some reason, I don't think of this. Yeah. And yet, this is one of the simplest, most streamlined deck building games Correct. out there. It's good looking, smooth as all get out pretty yep. much. You know, no weird funkiness going on in this one. Nice expansion, couple of expansions mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, this is good stuff. This. Was this an award winner or the, definitely an awards contender? It was, a, it it was, was nominated, nominated, I think. Yeah. 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 So this is uh, good stuff. Ryan Yurkinitsia strikes won again. A decade. That's correct. Oh, he's, he's won like back to back, didn't he? Did he? He and Tom Hanks are the only two people <laughs> I can think of. Um, anyway, the quest for El Dorado, my mm -hmm. number three. All right, one of my guilty sins at a convention. Pie for breakfast. Well, shut I'm up, sorry, man. Was Cake out of a vending chance. machine? Cake. <laughs> Vending machine cake. Vending right. machine cake. The, no, I sometimes am slightly amused if my table is having such a good time that we slightly disrupt the tables around us. Ah, uh -huh. And my number three game does that to is. no so small dumb. effect. 100%. Yeah, so okay, so now I feel good about my Formula E. Here we go. Ave Caesar. Oh, oh this, this is, is not, not what, what I thought. thought. Okay, well, whatever you thought is not on my list then. Magical athletes. Oh, okay. Ave Caesar. It's okay. gonna be on is that what you thought too? Yeah, 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 hundred okay. percent. No, but Ave Caesar disrupts tables around you mm, because uh -huh. you. I make people stand up and shout Ave Caesar yeah, so <laughs> and throw fake. their coin in. Yeah. It's a really fun racing game, but it's very mean. But it's the kind of mean racing game that everyone is being mean to each other every single turn of the game. Sure. So you don't get like, oh, you're, and it's basically you're blocking me. I can't move. Right. So you just you play a card. Everyone has a little deck of cards. You're going to go through that whole deck. If you run out of cards, you lose. So you don't want to go around the corners too long. And then if someone goes in front of you and it's your turn to play, you do nothing. You sit there. Yeah. But turns are really fast. It plays six players. It's really well done. They made a space version of this. Uh, Descartes made a space version of this, and the company went out of business probably because they did that. Um, no, it's because they made a bunch of other trash games. Because in space, no one can hear you scream. Mm. The Ave space scene does not work, though. It's called Ave Caesar because you have to, at one point, you have to slow down and stop by Caesar's stand and throw him a coin. That's correct. Because he desperately needs the money. Yeah. Um, this is really fun. I have a blast every time we play this. Also, the box. <laughs> Uh, you mean Ave Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> that is a uh -huh. deep cut joke. That is a that deep is. cut I joke. I applaud you. That was nicely done. <laughs> nicely done. Ave oh. Caesar, my number three. Uh. My number two is going to sound very familiar because it was just spoken about. My number two Ave is... Caesar. Quest for El Dorado, Tom. The Quest for El Dorado, Tom. You guys think too much alike sometimes. We do. There's yeah. not that many racing games. There's, there are not. Actually, there are, no, there's there's a, a lot. lot of racing games, and, and the cream of the crop really stands out. I agree. Well, what? there's also, the, if you some people like those really heavy thinking racing games. There's a lot of those. Sure. You know, like the, yeah. I mentioned, uh, what's the one from GMT? The Yeah, Thunder Alley. Thunder Alley, and that's light considered to a lot sure, of these. There's sure. very complex racing games. Right. Yeah, I when we were talking about this list, my one and my two I knew right away. The other ones where I had to do a little bit of, of but, okay. but this this to me is, is like you mentioned, uh, it's one of the first games I think about when I think about like intro deck building games. It's also one of the first things I think about when I think about racing games though, yeah. because one of the reasons why I think this works so well is for people that are not familiar with deck building is that Everyone's familiar with racing. 
mm -hmm. right? And it's just such a simple system of I'm going through green, I'm playing a machete card. I'm going through water, I'm playing an aura That's card. That's true. It's just so simple, and you know what your goal is at the beginning of the game. There's yeah. no obscurity about it. It's like, I need to get from here to there. Yeah. I play these guard cards to do so. I'm adding more cards. It just makes intuitive sense. Um, yeah. And yeah. it's very variable. You can set up, you know, if you're playing with newer players, you can do the, the very basic tracks. If you're playing with people that know the game very well, you can create these really tricky ones that give you a lot of things to get in your way yeah. and cause you to have to be smart about how you, you know, kind of efficient through these paths. And uh, like you said, some good expansions already that have come out yeah. for it. So I just think this is a terrific game. Quest for El Dorado. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, my number two is the crossover no one expected with Mike Delisio. Is it Formula E? No, it is can't. not Formula E. I ended up getting rid of my copy uh, of Formula E because I thought it was fine. This is Long Shot, the dice Whoa, game. Whoa, number two. This shot's a number two. This is wow. pretty hot for you, because I know what your number one is. It's a wow. long shot, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it did make it to number two. I bought all the horses. <laughs> I bet on everything. Uh -huh. And it came in at number two. Those pieces look so good. They do, They're right? nice, chunky wooden pieces. Also, look at the name of that uh, number seven horse. That's that's clever. Better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long shot the dice game. Weird title again. I think it. I think I think I think I said this in my review too. I think it keeps everything that really worked mm. in long shot. Yeah, and changes anything else that I thought could have been improved. I mm. really do. Much tighter gameplay length. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Long shot is kind of long. It's like 90 minutes. Wow. Okay. It's for a silly like, whoo! Yeah. It's like, okay, come on, buddy, <laughs> yeah. you can make it. So yeah. it's a little long. This one's 30. Mm -hmm. It keeps all the horse buying, the betting, the cheering, the rolling the dice is the same exact thing. Mm. The rolling the dice to move the horse. Yeah, yeah. Um, the secondary movement line is very similar. You know, this idea of when that horse moves, hey, this one also moves. Yeah, there's also little combo-y stuff you get. But then you've got all yeah. this other stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, and there's none of the randomness of in long shot, there's a giant deck of cards and you just draw and play. Like, you know, move a horse you own up to, gain five bucks, do mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right, right. So they made all of that, boiled it down to just a few combos on these cards. Now when you buy a horse, the power now works. Yeah. And it works all the time. In long shot, when you roll dice, your horse has worked. Now if, an, if a horse is owned, the thing on it just works all the time. Right, right. Yeah, it just elevated all the fun. Mm. And you streamline that into 30 minutes, it's a blast of joy. Mm -hmm. I've really had a great time with it. So long shot, the dice game, I think, is going to be one that, um, that has... That sticks around, that people are going to be talking about for a while. Yeah, that would be nice. And That's the last one. one, which I'm glad because I, I like this company, Perplexed, but their Roland Wright Oh, yeah, you did game, not like that. I really disliked that game. I thought that game was very weak. In fact, that character is back in this game. As your opponent in a solo game. Mm, solo game. game, yeah, that's right. And like, so Z beats the crap. Oh, out of him. I have wrecked him. <laughs> anyway, long shot the dice game, fantastic. Mm. All right, I feel a little guilty here because I'm pretty sure my number two. I whenever I introduce people to this game, I say this is the greatest racing game in the entire world. So if I said that, I apologize because it's actually only number two. Wow. But that is Magical Athlete, oh, well, as you guys already go. spoiled. But Magical Athlete, it's a foot race. It's a roll and move race. It has the worst looking board. <laughs> I like I mock the boards that Chris plays games on all yeah, the time. No, this is this is <laughs> this is offensive. That yeah, board I mean, this actually is looks kind of like Chris offensive. poop on yeah, the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From this angle, anyway, look doesn't look good. That, Tom. Uh, with standees, it's, this makes 18xx games look like they were made by Days of Wonder. <laughs> and it is so fun because yeah. the combination of powers causes the most ridiculous things to happen. If you come to a convention, say, Tom, I want to play if, one of my conventions because it's there. I want to play Magical Athlete. It might happen. This is basically Cosmic Encounter, the racing game, right? It's just yes. chaos yes. I and feel powers like and kind of silliness. That. And, yeah, mechanically, the, 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 the joy in the game is not in the mechanisms. It's in the interactions that I are created, agree. right? I guess so. Yeah. And I... And I 
this was going to be reprinted. Wow. COVID kind of shut that really? down. Yeah. But you never know. Maybe mm. it will happen. Mm. I will do whatever I can to get this <laughs> game reprinted because I love Magical Athlete. Mm. Um, and I wanted, this is one of the ones that if it came with a Kickstarter, I'd be like, I hope there's a thousand stretch goals because mm. I want a thousand different racers. Would you say this game is essential? I, would, I did not say that. I'm just saying, maybe you I could did not, try to make that happen. I have tried to say it was wow. essential, but it is a fantastic <laughs> Magical Athlete, yeah. my number two. All right, I need to apologize to Z. I think I'm stealing your thunder, bro. That's okay. I'll jump in if, yeah, if you this, are. This, this to me was... This is both your number ones? This, Tom, this wasn't even close to me. Wow. This wasn't even close to me. My number one is Jamaica. I just... This is the... This to I me. object. <laughs> Leading the witness. <laughs> this has everything that I'm looking for in a racing game. Pirates. Killing other people. Well, the treasures. Th yeah. Curses. The theme, the theme is great, first of all. It feels like a race, right? It does, it's it it's does. fast. It has great interaction between players. It has just enough decisions where you feel like you have some agency, but there's enough randomness and chaos in it that you don't feel like the person that's five spots ahead is guaranteed to win. You're not even necessarily guaranteed to win if you're the first to cross Port Royal. Sure. You know? So well, I, with the expansion you are. Well, I, I, I play disagree. With the <laughs> you hate that expansion so much. Yeah. You know what? I hate. Magical athlete. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Actually, I, I don't. I, I actually used to own that game, and I thought it was fun. But I won't say too much more because I have a feeling that that you're going to be talking. It is about my it. number one. Yeah. It is my number one. Yes. Um, oh and yeah. You, let's see. We put both editions up. We put the old edition and the new edition. There up you here. go. There's actually been quite a few printings of this, yeah. thankfully. And you know what? I will focus on that expansion as there I talk about Jamaica. Here we go. Jamaica Buckle is the only game I can think of where teaching Jamaica with the expansion is easier than teaching Jamaica without the expansion. Well, yes, that's a very true statement, what you just said. Also, it's the only game in which playing a game with the expansion <laughs> is less fun for Tom. I don't know. It's I'm saying, you said it's the, only, it's the only game where playing with the expansion makes it for, more fun to play Jamaica without the expansion. No, that's not what I said. That is no. what you said. It's easier to teach. Rewind the tape. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> no, Jamaica has a great expansion, beside the point. Yeah, it's, it's very much a fun uh, looting and shooting and blow, you know, exploding cannons at other people and all that stuff. The idea of rolling a couple of dice, setting a morning action and an evening action, and then just looking at like three cards you're right, holding and be right. like, that's what I'm doing. Yep. You flip it over, you gather some gunpowder, or you move, or you get some loot and start hoarding gold. Ha -ha, and you have the ship laden down with gold and try to avoid other people shooting you and mm -hmm, taking your taking stuff. Taking your stuff. Getting, you know, treasure where you draw a little card and it says plus seven points, and you're like, oof, great. Okay, I gotta, I gotta keep that safe, you know. Just, I mean, the game is fun. It's mm -hmm. to me, this one I would put in that category. Again, I'd, I'd maybe want to be the one running it, but like, like we said for downforce, mm -hmm. where it's like I don't know what the these folks that I'm about to play a game with like. Right. I, uh, you know, they want to play something that's a racing game or something they'll quickly understand. Pirates and racing and wanting gold yeah, makes right. sense to everybody. There's no, like, this dragon wants to take over this castle <laughs> yeah. because that's where his eggs are stored because of the previous winter. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it, also, you know, it plays up to uh, six, right? This plays six, yeah. Yeah, and it plays quickly, right? You can yeah, play a six-player game in an hour, and, you know, right, it, that's right. also a good thing. And it's one of the most beautiful games I own. It's gorgeous, yeah. This game is stunning looking. So, mm -hmm. my number one and Tom's number one. No, my number one With was... the expansion, it would be. <laughs> my number one does include the expansions. My number one was, no question, my favorite racing game by a mile, even though I love Magical Athlete. You guys know? It is my most played racing game. And oh, whoa, whoa. Pitch car. Yes. Oh, yeah. Pitch I, that car. was on my list, Tom. That was on my short list. Yeah, it should have been higher. Pitch car. And there's a, there's this is not the only, by the way, um, dexterity racing game. There's several of them. There's yeah. that one with the weighted balls that you shoot around, that you can shoot around corners. Um, you could you play, mean, ice I guess. Cool, no, ice cool. No, ice cool. They're like ice cool a little bit. 
Uh, but Pitch Card, yeah. man, I just love this game. It's a great racing game. And you crazy tracks, you're shooting the discs around. It's just so much fun. And it least amount of rules pretty much in any yes, game we mentioned right. also. Yeah, that's true. You, you know? almost don't have, I mean, I think you could set this up on a table and you don't wouldn't even have to tell people the rules and they'd pretty well, much figure it out. We yeah. do yeah. this for sure yeah. at Dice Archon. We, I would run it, yeah. and then I would leave it there with some cars, and you walk by and people are just playing. Yeah, there's no rules. Yeah, but what right. I do is I hide. You know, there's this one bush there, and I hide. <laughs> and if I see anybody make a mistake in the rules, I jump out. I'm like, <laughs> that's not how you play that Objection. game. <laughs> how is this different than Hot Wheels? Lawyer. Baloney. There nah. are actually rules to the game. There are, yeah. And it's fun. It's it's basically croak. I mean, if you like croak and all, mm -hmm. but you want to do it as a racing game, yeah. I just love it. And it plays a lot of people. <laughs> it needs. It needs a moderator if you're going to yeah. play with more than, let's say, eight. Yeah, come to come to a uh, retreat and you'll see how many people can play this game. It's ridiculous, yes. It is. They're blast. just round robbing blast. around the table. Yeah. Tables. So, now, before, uh, we'll mention a couple that we didn't put on our list, yeah. but before we do that, let's take a look at the people's choice here. Okay. And by the way, starting now, you can always go to DiceTower.com now and vote on the next top ten list. The next one's mm. already up there. It's a top ten Games for the classroom. So you can go vote for that and pick a bunch of games and see if they make the list. But let's see what you all picked. All People's right. Choice. That's oh, look at wow. that. Already, it's on huh? there already, Tom. Man. Yeah, number 10, I was Long really shot. surprised. The Long dice shot game. made it on at number 10. I got one. Snow, Snow Tales. Tales. That's me, baby. Yep. Pitch Car. Me. Okay. Quest for El Dorado. I've got two on there. So Blamo. you've got three. got two. Now, Cubitos, I saw even people in the chat. I, I know this is very popular. This game didn't do a whole lot for me. I like it, but I, I felt it was, it was a little okay. convoluted for yes. me. It doesn't make my list. I felt like it could have been slightly more streamlined. And this is a bag-building racing game. Okay. Not as good as automobiles, yeah. I think. But I felt like it's more about... You can, you can get so caught up in the bag building yes. part. You've, oh, yeah, that's right. We're racing. The race is secondary that's, almost. That's, yeah. I found to be less interesting. I can't get past that cover. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> also, right. yes. Yeah, Five through one are... Formula D, that's me, baby. Okay. Flam Rouge. Okay, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most mentioned game in the chat. Yeah. Flam Rouge. I just don't like Flam Rouge. I, I guess okay. I, I guess that's it. It's okay. It's a it's a game about switching positions, really. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's that more than racing. Yeah. It's, it's about like cycling, it. so it makes sense that they do that, you know. Yeah. Give you a break while you draft me and right. so on. Three right. camel up. Yep. Two, Jamaica, one, downforce. You're like on fire on this yeah, list. You man, are the you voice did. of the people when it comes to racing. All right, so the ones we didn't pick. I um, And some of them I didn't pick because I'm not sure that they really fall under the category of race game. I did put pitch, I did have Pitch Car on here. Yeah, I had uh, Rally too. Man GT, which um, does something kind of similar to what you were talking about with uh, Formula uh, D, where you're doing a little push your luck going into right. corners. The problem and stuff with the like Rally Man and all the Rally Mans is. That is a hard concept to teach. Yes, it is. Because you're racing not at the same time, but you are. It's a weird. Yeah. Yep. It All doesn't. Because right. you're like racing a ghost of the previous race, kind sort of. Sort of, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had Fast Slaws written down. I don't know if you can call that a race game. No, really. that's a race. That's a good one. I, I didn't think of that. I really like that game. Quad Heroes? Is that a racing game? Remember the big chunky things? It's almost more of a programming game than it no, is a racing that, game. No, you're not racing. You're going no. around beating the snot. I, I had Whale Riders, but I decided that that's not a race. Because it's not agree. really, you're not trying to be the first up there. You don't I win agree. by being the first. I thought about it, and I'm like, no, it doesn't, doesn't count. And then yet. the last one is a really odd choice, and I think it is technically a race. I don't. I think you've played it. Uh, Michael Strogoff. Remember that? Oh, wow. Really? I didn't put it. I mean, it's on my short list, but it didn't make the list. Okay. Because it didn't feel like a race, although it is technically a race. I was going to put Fury of Dracula on mine. There you go. If I'm playing as Dracula, because you better run. All right. Mm -hmm. So my short list, I had Formula D, okay. Robo Rally. Not a racing no. game. Robo Rally is 100% a racing and game. And that was a programming deck building game. <laughs> it's not a deck building. That wasn't a Z. It's a cannibal. It is programming. Game. It's a racing game. But you, this one needs a lot of care. Uh, the person who sets the racetrack up needs to make a very Think small... Think always smaller. Yeah. Always smaller, yeah. I put Steampunk Rally. It's a fun mm -hmm. little racing game. Uh, Winner's Circle, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Cubitos. And then I have two games that have the same theme, but they're very different games. The first is uh, the um, Herod of Tortoise, okay. which was rethemed later on by Yellow to Around the World 80 Days. Yeah. Yes. This is a very mathematical racing game. It won the first Spiel des Jahres, actually. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's a little... Brainy, but I like it. Yeah. And then the other is the hare and the tortoise, 
in the, the, the tales, series. the storybook and, thing. Yeah, the storybook one from yes. Purple Brain. That's probably my eleven. Mm. That one you're betting on, like. Does the who wins in these right, fairy tale yeah, characters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's fun. That it game is. is very good, and that's a kid's game. Like I mean, it is sold as a kid's Part game. Of that series, yeah, yeah. The tales and what is it? Books and tales or something tales like and it. something? I wrote T tales from the I wrote T and G. So yeah. tales, tales and games. Tales, tales and, and games. Yeah. Must something be like it. That. Yeah. But that game, even for adults, I would recommend it. Sure. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's the best game in that series, personally. By far. Yes, it is. And it is a solid racing game. Mm -hmm. Odds. Things to think about. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Yeah. Very neat. Anything that was, did you have a short list or no? Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, I do not. <laughs> One through ten. He was sitting there sweating bullets. That's He's like, ah. Right. I got a few extras, but nothing you guys didn't mention. Pitch okay. car was on it. That Tales and Games and Crypt. Thing. There was a lot I didn't write down. There's a lot of racing games I found. Yeah. I actually, the, the reason we're doing this list is because I was sorting out the library and I put some new racing games yeah. and I was like we should put out all the racing games next to each other it's they're not, not quite idea. but they're close so we have Formula D and E next to I don't have Jamaica in that area I need to move you should, you should put well, that the size of game also affects uh, things yeah. fair fair <laughs> this, uh, racing games are not a style of game that's made often though yeah I think it's hard to do because right. it has to be fast mm -hmm. and I think it's just you cannot do a worker placement racing game I guess and work replacement like every Fever other has game. a little bit of work replacement. It does. In it, actually. it does a little yeah. bit. This that's is not the least a genre. interesting part of the game, though. I'm waiting for my roll and write racing game. I love it. All right. Well, thank you for everyone who's watching. Thanks to everyone who gave us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. We'll be live on Monday with Board Game Breakfast. There's I nothing that's going on tomorrow. We got to meet tomorrow because we're meeting tomorrow about Dice Tower East. Mm. You can sign up for that if you want to come, where there will likely be Pitch Car. Oh. Uh, I'll know tomorrow. Magical <laughs> athlete. Magical, Magical athlete, athlete will definitely be at Dice Tower East. Actually, mm -hmm. every game we mentioned is in the library, I think. Boom, boom, Formula boom, E boom, in the library? Boom. Yes, we I just do. Put next to Formula D. I think it's funny. Do we still have Odin's Ravens? I already forgot about it. We don't have Expedition Northwest Passage, probably. Oh, okay. All the good games. <laughs> That's a good game. You could play it on board game arena. I got Lucy uh, Clark in the library, just not. <laughs> I would, I, I might consider. I don't know anyone would play it. Though, I think Mike. you're right, though, Tom. I think it's probably too niche. I don't think it really. There's not enough. I mean, we have a big library, but probably, probably shouldn't take a spot with that. I think. Where's it's your cannibalism niche. section? That's right. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Michael Licio. Put your suspenders on straight, folks. Yes.